Lexington police have released the name of the man they say died early this morning along New Circle Road. A fallen police officer's widow and son look on in Richmond as the police station is renamed in his honor. And as investigators continue to search for answers, an outpouring of condolences for Prince. We'll have the latest on the death of the music icon. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Barbara Bailey. Bill has the day off. There is a large active police presence right now involving a missing persons case in southern Kentucky. State police are being tight lipped so far about what's going on. The scene is along Brammer Hill Ridge Road that's east of Monticello. WKYT's Phil Pendleton is live at the scene with more on what he's learned. He's joining us now by phone. Phil, what can you tell us so far? Well, there's not a really a whole lot to say, but I can tell you that there is a fairly significant police presence here along Brammer Hill Ridge Road, a very rural part of Wayne County. I'm off of Kentucky Highway 790. Now, police are telling me, they are confirming that there is a missing person case that has brought them here, but they're also looking for somebody else in connection to that missing person case, a person of interest, if you will, that they would like to talk to about that missing person, stopping short of calling that person a suspect at this point. Now, police are not saying exactly what is going on here or what this is all in reference to, except that there is a missing person investigation. Now, earlier today, I was driving on Brammer Hill Ridge Road near Brammer Hill Delta Road, uh, where I saw a detective, a Kentucky State Police trooper, and a sheriff's deputy at a home. Police would not tell me exactly what they were doing there, and in fact, even asked me not to shoot any video yet of that home or to take any photos. So we're still trying to gather details, trying to figure out what is going on. I was told by State Police spokesperson Lloyd Cochran out of the London Post that there will be a very significant announcement to make here in about two hours. So we're going to stay uh, stay put and stay tight, and we'll hope to bring you that by 4 o'clock. But stay tuned to, to WKYT and, of course, WKYT.com and social media with our sites, and we'll keep you informed on what's going on. In Wayne County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. All right, Phil, thank you. A lot of questions now, but hopefully answers soon. Also breaking this hour, the embattled Knox County School Board Chairman has resigned. Kentucky State Police and the Attorney General opened perjury investigations against Dexter Smith. He became the center of controversy when it came to light that he didn't have the high school diploma needed to qualify for the job. He then told the media he took his GED in order to put an end to the controversy, but state police say surveillance Surveillance video shows someone else taking that test for Smith. New information this midday in a death investigation here in Lexington. Police now say a man found dead along New Circle Road overnight was the victim of a hit and run. A passerby spotted the body around 4.30 this morning near Industry Road. Police now hope surveillance video will lead them to the driver. WKYT's Victor Puente is live near the scene now. It's our other top story at noon. Victor. Well, early this morning, Lexington police told us they weren't sure how that man died. Following an investigation, they, they now say it was a hit and run, and they're looking for that vehicle. This all started around 4.30 this morning when a man in a work truck saw a body lying on the outer loop of New Circle Road. The Fayette County coroner says 52-year-old Roger Morrison died there after he was struck by a vehicle and suffered multiple blunt force trauma. Both lanes of New Circle Road were shut down for more than two hours while the forensics team searched for evidence. At first, police weren't sure of how Morrison died. They say surveillance video from a neighboring business shows that he was struck by a vehicle, but the video is from so far away that they can't be sure what type of vehicle it is. People who work near that stretch of New Circle Road say they see a lot of people walking across the road in areas where there are no crosswalks. It's, it's, it's very scary. It's just like, you know, I just wish people be careful. Uh, some people slow down. Sometimes people are switching lanes when they're paying attention. I see people on the cell phones, and I've seen that happen many a times, you know, in front, you know, and people just reaching or reaching for CDs or something, and they're swallow over, and someone's right there. Lexington police say they are talking to other businesses in this area to see if anyone else has better surveillance video to give them a better idea of what happened early this morning.
Live in Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. Victor, thank you. A special honor today for a fallen Richmond police officer. The building Daniel Ellis worked out of now bears his name. Ellis was gunned down during a robbery investigation last November. His widow and young son were on hand for the renaming ceremony. WKYT's Mark Barber has that story. Today is Katie Ellis's birthday. It would also have been Officer Daniel Ellis's birthday. While this has been a very painful day for the fallen officer's family, it has also been a day to remember the life of service that he lived out in his 33 years. A crowd of officers and friends gathered around Ellis's widow and son to support them. Ellis would have turned 34 today, so officers started the morning's special ceremony with the balloon release. The dedication ended when Katie and Luke unveiled a plaque blazed with Ellis's name. Officers named their police building in his memory, so every person who passes by will be reminded of his sacrifice. Ellis was shot and killed five months ago when he was investigating an attempted robbery. His family still misses their hero every day. He gave his life doing what he liked to do. I mean, he wanted, always wanted to be a police officer. Uh, we just miss him, miss him immensely. And I appreciate the people of Richmond, uh, the outpouring that we've had as a family. You know, there's been a lot of uh, love and prayers and support for us. Ellis's family says they are grateful for the building dedication, and they're especially grateful for this plaque because as his four year old son grows older, it will always be here to remind him of his father's service and sacrifice. In Richmond, Mark Barber, WKYT. Thank you, Mark. A wonderful honor there. And Ellis will also be honored next month during National Police Week in Washington, D.C. His name then will be added to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial. A well known Pulaski County businessman has died six weeks after he was wounded in an accidental shooting. The sheriff says Ward Correll died last night at UK Hospital. Correll had been at UK since he accidentally shot himself at his home on March 9th. He owned Cumberland Lake Shell and several other businesses in the Somerset area. Well, the rain chances continue today, but boy, a great weekend is on tap. WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell is live in our first alert weather center now with an early look at the forecast. Tell us about it, Jimmy. Barb, the only thing is we got to get through today. Once we get through today, we're going to get into that nice weekend. We've been tracking showers out there, some cooler temperatures compared to yesterday as well, with all the clouds and the rain passing through. You can see it on our Defender Radar Network and all the clouds. What you're going to run into, though, from time to time is where we have some of the thinner areas of cloud cover where it's not quite as white you are running into a little more sunshine, but it won't last long because we've got this energy just up the road that's uh, kind of hovering through parts of southern Indiana. That's going to drop through northern Kentucky and eventually right on into central Kentucky as well as we advance through the rest of the uh, afternoon and evening. So you might even run into an occasional thunderstorm too. Tracking a little bit of rain along 64 and back toward West Liberty and uh, even into Lee and Asley counties as well. Just another little pocket. Again, traveling along the Mountain Parkway too. This is a look at our high resolution radar. You can see the rain coming together a little bit better once we make that transition into the afternoon and evening hours. So a little more likely out there through the rest of the day, Barb, before we clear things up and run back to the sunshine for the weekend. I'm going to track the sunshine because that's the fun part. I'll have that coming up in just a few minutes. Now that's what we want to focus on. Thank you, Jimmy. An autopsy will be performed today in Minneapolis to determine what caused the death of Grammy and Oscar winning artist Prince. Millions of his fans around the world are mourning his passing. Many still stunned that the prolific recording star is gone. Jamie Yukas has the latest now from outside Prince's Paisley Park recording studio near Minneapolis. The fence outside Paisley Park Studios has bloomed into a violent memorial as fans paid tribute to Prince. He touched many, many generations, he touched many cultures. Prince's reign over popular music spanned four decades and touched almost every genre. He wore his sincerity on his sleeve and you could feel it. I'm going to miss my friend. Sheila E. knew and worked with Prince for almost 40 years. He was a gentleman, very funny and uh, competitive, a perfectionist, a genius. An autopsy today will help determine the cause of death, but results will not be known for days or weeks. 
The 57-year-old had reportedly been battling the flu. If the mood outside Paisley Park is somber, it's the exact opposite here outside Minneapolis Club First Avenue, where purple rain was filmed. An all-night street party will keep on going. More celebrations of Prince's life are planned for tonight and tomorrow. So With his death, Prince is king of the music charts, his albums dominating the iTunes Top 50 list. Krista Barnes brought her son Yele to Paisley Park to create a memory. Trying to explain to a three-year-old who Prince was was not easy. Uh, so hopefully in time he'll understand the importance of being here today. And join the millions of other fans who remember the music. Jamie Yukis, CBS News, Minneapolis, Minnesota. The medical examiner says no preliminary findings will be released from the autopsy and that results will be revealed once all the information is in. Once the autopsy is finished, Prince's body will be released to his family. We're tracking a developing story just north of the Kentucky border. Multiple fatalities are reported in a shooting in southern Ohio. A Cincinnati TV station is reporting seven family members were shot and killed at a home in Pike County. The scene is near Waverly, about 80 miles east of Cincinnati. There are reports the shooter is not in custody and that some area schools have been put on lockdown. Dozens of Kmart stores are closing across the nation, including some in Kentucky. Details ahead on WKYT. And a tiger on the loose was captured in Texas. Now the hunt is on for its owner. That's ahead after the break. Welcome back. More news now. Sears plans to close 68 Kmart stores across the country, including five stores in Kentucky. No Lexington area stores are on the list to be closed. The Kentucky locations are Maysville, Paintsville, Elizabethtown, and two stores in Louisville. All of the stores will close in late July. Sears is also closing 10 Sears stores this summer. You'll recall that Sears at Fayette Mall closed in 2013. Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip welcomed the President and First Lady to Windsor Castle. The official reason for this visit by President Obama and the First Lady is lunch with the Queen to toast her 90th birthday. But the timing is very controversial to some Britons. The President is helping Prime Minister David Cameron win a tough upcoming vote. He's trying to convince Britons to stay members of the European Union, the 28-nation club that binds European countries together. Animal control officers in a small Texas town got more than they bargained for yesterday. Crews captured a young female tiger roaming a neighborhood in the city of Conroe. Officers began searching for the cat after several frantic phone calls from residents, you can imagine. Authorities say it appears the tiger is domesticated. It was wearing a collar with a leash when it was caught. Police are now trying to figure out who owned the tiger. Several local churches are going global by helping to feed hungry children. This morning, volunteers packed Scott County's Greece Christian Church to assist in an event called Feed My Starving Children. Volunteers filled bags with rice and vegetables. Those bags will be sent to a warehouse in Chicago and later dis distributed to children starving in third world countries. It's amazing. I mean, Grace Christian is an awesome church. It's been a fantastic church to, to partner with their heart and their mission to, to act locally and engage globally. Um, it's just a real blessing to be part of. Several different churches in Scott County are taking part in the event. The amount of food packed at Grace Christian will feed an estimated 700 children a day for one year. Some of us are actually starting to see some sunshine out there, but Mother Nature says not so fast. More showers and even a few thunderstorms will likely increase as we head through the rest of the afternoon and evening. We will track them and a nicer weekend. Oh, yeah. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. We were getting to see a little bit of sunshine here in Lexington, but the clouds are coming back together. Yeah, we have the sun out there, but with more clouds on the way, that could mean one thing for us on a day like today, and that means showers and even a few thunder showers will likely come together here within the next little bit. We're tracking some on our radar network. I'll show you those in a moment. But right now, we're at 66 degrees with some of that sun trying to make its way through the clouds. Humidity still on the higher side, up to around 70% with a west-southwest wind at 10 miles per hour. That's
that pumps in some warmer air as well. As we look ahead, we're talking about a warm and dry Saturday and possibly even a run at 80 by Sunday. To, we're just this close probably, but some of you might see your car thermometers, backyard thermometers go and say just that. It's a very active pattern beyond that as well. Once we get into next week, we'll track a daily chance of showers and thunderstorms. Right now, on our Defender Radar Network, the best little batch of rain that's coming together and will likely drop into parts of our area is showing up across southern Indiana. A little bit of rain in eastern Kentucky as well, stretching from southern Ohio all the way back down into northern sections of Laurel County. Here's where we've got the action, though. That little bit of lightning. Watch where it's headed more toward the southeast and will likely invade our area within the next hour to an hour and a half. This one's moving a little bit quicker, though. It's lighter in nature as well. Passed through Moorhead into West Liberty and through Campton here in the last little bit, but continues to work out of here. Here's our hour by hour forecast. You can see. The regeneration of showers and scattered thunderstorms a little bit later on here this evening with temperatures maxing out in the upper 60s for some. But notice southern and eastern Kentucky, this particular model at least, trying to suggest you get into the low 70s. Things will clear up though as we head through the nighttime period overnight. Early tomorrow morning, we start things off in the 50s and we're right back into the upper 60s for highs tomorrow. Here comes your seven day forecast, which features. A little more warm air coming at us. After having those nice 80 degree days, we're like, you know what? Let's get back to that. And that's where we're going. The problem is, though, next week, Barb, it's a daily chance of showers and some thunderstorms. So the warmth comes with price. Why does there always have to be a problem along with it? Always. It just works like that, right? It's just when I show up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. You pointed that out. Yeah, I did. All right. And we are back with more. When we come back, the Wildcat baseball squad looks to get back on track tonight at home. Well, in Cincinnati, a Thursday night Reds fan, a Thursday night Reds fans won't forget no matter how hard they try. Dave Baker's next with sports. And there you have a look at stocks. All the indicators are up at the midday. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot, $97 million. And Saturday night's Powerball jackpot, $251 million. The showers that rolled through last night washed out 12th ranked Kentucky baseball series opener against Arkansas. Two teams try again tonight at 7 30. They wrap things up with a Saturday doubleheader that begins at noon tomorrow. No more, uh, no one is more antsy to get back on the field than UK skipper Gary Henderson. Not only has his team lost five of its last six, but Tuesday they couldn't close out Louisville after jumping out to a 5 1 lead. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised, but. Uh... You know, it's part of it, and it happens at every level of baseball, and uh, you're never really pleased when, when you're the one to go through it. We've certainly seen guys uh, pitch against us, not perform as well as, as you would expect uh, when the game got tight. I think we played some good baseball. You know, we lost to Vanderbilt by uh, less than three on um, two games, and, you know, played a close game with them then. Lost to Louisville last week in a close game. Now, obviously, last night's a close game. Uh, you know, we feel like we're right in them uh, every game. You know, they're, they're good learning experiences for us, and uh, I think we're taking something out of it and getting better each game. So I think we're I think we're doing okay. Bill Bryant talking up those Reds. That's why he's not here today. Last night's series opener against the Cubs, Anthony Rizzo. That's a three-run shot, making it nine nothing Cubs in the sixth. How about bases full in the seventh? Chris Bryant. Oh my gosh, does he crush that pitch? Grand slam. And boy, was that a long way out. But the story was Jake Arrieta. Here in the ninth, Eugenio Suarez pops up to the right side, and Arietta pitches a no hitter on top of the Cubs 16 runs on 17 hits. Bad, bad night for the Reds. First time they've been no hit since 1971. That's a stretch of 7,109 games. Oh, the guy in the white jersey. Yeah, you see him getting taken off by the cops. He wasn't supposed to be out there for the celebration. And John Calipari staying true to form, trying to get commitments from the nation's best prospects just as soon as possible. His latest offer going to guard Tremont Waters. Waters is 5'11, plays the point at South Kenton, Connecticut. He's rated the number eight point guard in the class of 2017. Duke also visited with Waters uh, this past week. Calipari watched Waters last weekend in Brooklyn. He hopes to cut his list to a top five later this summer. Much more on the Cats as they open up that series against Arkansas coming up a bit later. But when we come back, WKYT News at 1230 is just ahead.